Hey, this is Mateo Lane. I'm Emma Wilman. And this is Inside the Closet. Inside the Closet. <laughs> All right, Happy New Year. Hi, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We got to start with. I didn't see Mariah, but. I felt like it was the play su- by play. It was the Super Bowl of. Were you excited? Were you that nervous? That was my Super Bowl. <laughs> and let me just say this. I hope Janet Jackson shows up for the Super Bowl this year and just rips off Justin Timberlake's bra. Oh, yes. That's what I want. I that love would, that. It would make gay history. That Janet would... Jackson would push every single human being who's ever lived aside and become the gay icon. That was that really was so fucked up when that happened. Cause yeah, then... he ripped off her bra and then she was like... People were mad at her, right? Mad at her! Yeah. And then, why were we mad at her? And I then, and then Justin that. went off in his... Oh, I just think he's so annoying. I'm BSB all the way. I mean, don't even. I, I think Justin's supremely ta- very talented, but I think. You I know, my love problem is I Backstreet. think he's super handsome. Exactly. And I said that so people like me. Right. And then I think he's really talented. I just think I don't like people who think they're funny and they're not. Yeah, he when he like around with Fa- Jimmy Fallon and they're yeah, like, like, trying to be up. on and top of each other. Cut it out. We you can't do everything. Oh, actually, he did this a couple sketches on SNL that made me laugh. Like he was a piece of tofu. I really, know, but that's what I'm saying. I hate it. That made me laugh. <laughs> it makes me so mad. And the dick didn't he do Dick in a Box? Yeah, he did yeah, Dick I in like a Box. That. Ray Sani hates him. Really? She, oh, Ray she Sonny's goes off comic. on Twitter about how much she hates him. I'm, By the way, the, I, it's so cold out. My nose just is leaking. Oh, it's, it's always leaking. I got water coming out of my forehead. I don't know what's going on. I look like a fucking asshole. All right, so <laughs> I have to say. Yeah, so how was the, and were you like, were you, were you, how were you feeling? I, I okay, so I was like waiting on bait and, bait and breath. Is that the phrase? That's something I've know. said a bunch of times, and then you think back, and you're like, that's not the right terminology. I'm not sure what it bait and br- i don't know i've waited on i've bait and anyways i i uh bait and hook <clears throat> i watched it in a cab oh wow because i was on my way to go to the cellar to celebrate new year's and of course mariah carey comes on like 15 minutes before they bring in the new year so everyone the world is texting me i right. mean i'm getting texts from people i haven't talked to in years i'm kind of surprised they were having her do this considering all the like uh glitches with glitches what <laughs> Just a single glitch. The whole performance was a single glitch so, last year. Right. So how did it go? It. The, my review is that she finished both songs. Here's the thing. What songs did she do? New She's saying Vision of Love, I like a, a part of Vision of Love, and then saying Hero. Okay. And she lip synced the bridge of Hero. Damn. Which she always lip syncs. Right. You'll find the way, hey, then a hero comes along. She always lips that. I sound like beef jerky right now, but I'm also not Mariah Carey. Did she, um, did she like dance or put any effort into that? Oh, no. Okay. Here's the thing she did right. Let's get this down, right? Number one, I like that she agreed to do it. Sure. I like a vengeful performance. I like a vindictive, vengeful performance. I enjoy that. She must have paid so much I money. I can't... 20 million minimum. Yeah. No, probably like 2 million. I mean, 20 million is a lot. No, I bet, she got, I bet she got more than that. I bet she got paid so much money. I bet she got a lot of money. So here's the thing she did right. Number one, she stuck with the classics. All right? We're not doing any whistle tones. We're not doing any of that shit. We're doing Vision of Love, and we're doing Hero. Got it. Those right. don't go particularly high. For a Mariah Carey song, they're not the most difficult songs She's to sing. She's playing it safe. She's play- if she needed to play it safe. Right. She looked- Shout out to our straight guy listeners right now for lis- engaging with us while we discuss this. Oh, show. they can. If, they, they, <laughs> if you haven't, yeah. So she looked good. She looks good. Good. The makeup Losing is weight. good. The weight looks, the body looks good. Great. The dress looks good. Everything she picked was great. She's beautiful, like honey colors, like a light pink. Like, she looks beautiful. She didn't move a muscle. She, she stood at a microphone. Well, last year she's trying to do a dip and like the feathers. And I mean, the last year was like, oh, girl, what are you doing? So she stood perfectly still. Fine. All these things she did right. Here's what she did wrong. Yeah. She. She, because I'm such a Mariah Carey fan, I mean, I, I listen to, I like, I watch every live performance on YouTube. I'm always checking in on the voice. Right. It's not, it's always, it's like you're checking a turkey, you're like, it's never going to be done. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's been raw now for 15 years. And it's like, someone turn up the fucking heat. <laughs> checking a turkey. So, I mean. I just picture a turkey with Mariah Carey's head on it. I don't know why. Uh, yeah. But, oh, yeah. Well, that's a chicken, but they're kind of the same. Oh, <laughs> That's a turkey. Oh, my animals are all fucked up. I, can't I got even... pig down. Oink oink. That's about it. That's not even. <clears throat> that's a pig. Uh, oink oink. No. <clears throat> oh. Do that. Do that. And then, what's, do a... That. And then a... what's a squawk? Squawk squawk. 
What? Maybe I'm making an animal up. A, qu- a quack? <laughs> a duck? No, a duck. A yeah, squawk duck. is like a Pokemon. Squawk, squawk. Girl. I'll Google. Girl. Okay, so. So, she, here's the thing. She sounded fine. Better than last year? Well, she didn't even sing last right. year. She walked around saying, this is a number one hit, while her whistle tones are lipped behind her. <clears throat> I love that. Literally, I want you to say right now, this is a number one hit. This is a number one hit. Number I mean, one. That, I didn't know she could throw her voice like that. Right. So, she sounded, to okay, to Mariah Carey's standards, not great. But she really hasn't sounded great in a long time. So people who watch it, all the reviews are like, well, she sounded kind of raspy or mm. she like missed a beat in Vision of Love. It was like, Poof. and then she goes, treated me, huh? but she like missed it. And She's just not at the peak of her game. She's not, but she could be. Right. The thing is, she could be. She could still be good. There's a chance we can get our diva back, but she just she seems so care, loopy. Seems like. Yeah. She's like loopy and tired. And Maybe she just drinking doesn't have and the, the hunger. Maybe she, you know she what doesn't. I mean? So which... She probably, she's been in the business such a long time, and it's like, so, at, at some point, you know how, like, Seinfeld ended right at the right moment? The show ended right at the right moment? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, would you rather have her here doing things that are okay, or would you rather have her not performing? And then it's like, okay, she's, you've got the memories. I'd rather her do what Patty's doing. Patty is 70. Right. And still on her game. For one second, I thought you meant your friend Patty, and I was a little and confused, I, I, and then, I'm talking about yeah. Patty. <laughs> Legal minor on Instagram. Who I saw last night. Um, I just think that she... Um, I think that she's a, of a dying breed. Rest up and perform when it's something that'll make you excited and is uh, an amazing thing. Oh, yeah, also, like, do vocalizations. Get your voice back into shape. You she has voice nodules. Yourself. Get rid of those. She's got the money and the doctors everywhere around her who could... Right. Who could potentially make her voice so great again. But I think because she's got such an ego, I'm Mariah Carey. Mm. She just thinks showing up is good enough. Right. Yeah, I think and it's you get clear people, she's you, surrounded by a bunch of yes men. I was just going to say that. You get people that... I read um, Charlemagne's book, which was awesome. And he had this story <laughs> about... You read Charlemagne's book. I loved book. it. Oh, my God. I watched so many documentaries over like the holidays. I, I capped out after I watched Al, Alan Iverson's documentary. I'm not into basketball. I was like, I don't even know who that is. I was watching Alan Iverson's documentary crying. I don't know if it was because I'm on this birth control now for my skin, but I'm watching his documentary crying crying like he's misunderstood and i was like all right a i got a basketball player what else do you need to do but play basketball he was very misunderstood how it's what did he dribble with his feet no it was like he like the way he dressed and stuff people said that he was like r- promoting like thug and rap culture when really he was just being true to himself and it was a whole thing but so i've been just like reading trying to consume like all kinds of stuff but the thing before i like dipped into just watching up to alan iverson's documentary was charlemagne's book was really good but he had a story about kanye west having these yes he's a Kanye. oh you said that yeah he has yes men all around him and he goes one time i was interviewing him and he had these two buddies like outside it was a glass glass thing yeah and then every time he would say something he would look out and the two buddies would like be like laughing hysterically and giving him this thumbs up so he kept looking to them for like assurance that what he was doing was good and he's like his buddies right on cue he would look they would give a response they'd encourage him the whole thing and then after the interview i was like man like those guys like don't actually have your they don't actually know what you're doing he's like that's not true that's not true and he was like that glass you can't hear through it so he was just getting that's just like yes people don't even know what you're doing it's like that scene in the simpsons where mr burns loses all his money but he has all his lawyers around him and he keeps going i made all the right moves like yes 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 he's like i did everything correct yes 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 and he goes i see it all now you're just a bunch of yes men (laughs) yes yes right exactly exactly Exactly. I think we've said this before on the podcast. Have we? I don't know. It feels very familiar. Maybe it's deja vu. Could be. I think she's surrounded by a bunch of yes men. She's done some right things. She fired that manager, Stella. Yep, get her out. She has been publicly way more quiet. So she's just doing like her... She did her Christmas show. Yeah, lay low. She's she's looking good. but, but But something... Single? She no, she's dating her backup dancer, some oh. gay guy. I forget his name. <laughs> but um, she uh, she has an album she's working on. And I love she's that. She signed with Jay Z's record label. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah, but it's not a good sign when you're jumping from manager to manager to record label to record label. Like Jay Z, I don't know if he's L.A. Reid. When Emancipation Mimi came out, she hired the manager who was J Lo's manager. Right. 
who kept who is like this is what you're doing this is how you're doing it they hired um fashion stylists for w- during that time when they were promoting you did the whole thing you make the person she came out yeah it, yeah and she was like on it on it on it she had la reed down her throat being or her neck being like listen you know you better fucking these songs better be good blah blah, blah. and it was a great album it was a great time and she went straight to number one it's- and then she you know got i think she was really hungry during this is I'm so Mariah Carey during Charm Bracelet after right. Glitter she made an album called Charm Bracelet Charm Bracelet was kind of an okay album but during that time she went on tour and when she was on touring she had a lot to prove right so she also, was, when was working her divorce because right with coming. Tommy Mottola yeah that was like ninety seven and so did this correlate with when she had a great no because gl- no because nothing is 2000, like a divorce to make you would be like two thousand one two thousand two was Charm Bracelet tour but she looked good she sounded great she was getting her voice back and she had a lot to, she would sell out. Um, half sell out crowds like not full crowds to theaters and stuff but people really weren't into Mariah Carey except right. the Mariah Carey fans so she used an entire year of touring the whole world in these sort of like smaller venues no for wonder Mariah she's fucking tired but then but then she killed it she came out with Emancipation Me she killed it right she sounded great now, the that kind back. of stuff makes me cry when that you are definitely on but that this has control. always been whenever I hear about people like trying and then people and things aren't they're like having to build and having to build and people are telling them they can't do it that makes me get like emotional like I won't cry at like all the most horrific stuff but then when I see certain things that are like any like behind the VH1's behind the music I always would cry at that because there'd always be some point in it where it'd be like and then everyone said they couldn't do it and they were living in a group home oh Mateo's got the music out and keep going Oh, and then, I, and so then that makes me get emotional. So the idea of her selling, like, performing to like half empty, because I I relate to it. I'm do I'll do shows for like eight people at a, not anymore, but exactly. I was just gonna say she didn't sound like that a couple of days ago. Now, do you have any resolutions, New Year's resolutions? Um, you know, I feel okay. Resolutions, um, less sundresses. <laughs> Um, He's already broken that one. I've been moisturizing a lot more. That's great. Um, I kind of did a lot in 2017. I did a lot. I got a lot of people out of my life that were toxic. That's a great and one. And it wasn't a lot of people. I mean, it was a few people I was able to get Even out. getting one toxic person out of your life can be hard because it's the men. It's like the men. T- there's so many other things surrounding it. It's not just the person. It's like, what lines did you cross to have that person in your life? Right. Out of this film. And form, I think you know? back on those situations and I, and I, and it still riles easy. me up and it's yeah. like, okay, that, 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 that's a sign that this is good that this person's has moved on. Right. And I, you know, I did a lot of things. I redid my my apartment so it's like a home i want to come to huge I, I planted i think a lot of good seeds and so i think 2018 could be really good for me hopefully career-wise yep keep doing what you're doing i gym i go to the gym yeah <laughs> i don't know i started doing pilates i well what did you you went to like i went to a couple pilates classes and... are we being funny right now or like too oh, serious i, I well i got some relationship stuff that will crank it up into the humor you know department. i need to go pee and then let's get into this okay Okay, we had to take a quick pause so I could spill coffee everywhere, but we are back. Um, I wanted to get your opinion on this. So, so let me think how to even like begin to. Okay, so the last time we were talking, I was still talking to the Boston girl, and like it's like was going well and all that stuff. But so I come to. Uh, so when I came back, we had we like loosely been talking about doing something on New Year's Eve. Now when I come back in, I'm like trying to like figure out moving at this is at the time. Also, right now my life is like much much calmer, so I've got some space from it. But this was like the most hectic three weeks. So I'm trying to figure out moving, and I was living with the ex girlfriend who I had lived with for a long time, and the moving she had been out of town and then she came back in town so we're both in the apartment and i'm like trying to figure out moving you know doing career stuff all that and then the boston girl started like saying like that we weren't like talking as much anymore but we would still like talk at night or like we like talk on the phone or talk on the phone and then you talk on the phone we would talk that's a bold move we would talk on the phone we would like facetime maybe we weren't talking facetime actually makes more sense the talking on the phone is i only talked to like a few people on. yeah it was like it was like a i mean it was basically we're in a relationship and but it was weird too because i felt like kind of mixed messages from her because when she started saying like you haven't been like reaching out to me as much i was like oh like 
I didn't realize that. I, I don't know. I, you was, didn't realize that you were there. R- well, and maybe also, she was, saw you guys more. Did, okay, it, did you I see, did feel like we were there a little bit, but then it was. But it, the whole thing seems abstract from my perspective. There was a lot of gray area. Also, the like, whole thing was gray. So then. Um, so then, like, I'm, like, dealing with, like, I guess I was, like, messaging her a lot less. Also, probably because I was, like, totally emotionally overwhelmed with, like, trying to figure out my living situation, which... Living situation is difficult. Moving huge, is difficult, especially in New York City. Huge. Huge. So that's, like, on the horizon. And then she's saying, okay, I want to, like, go somewhere, like, Maine or do something in the woods for New Year's Eve. Now, I've been traveling, like, crazy. So I sent her a message and was like, hey, could we stay closer to New York? For New Year's Eve. And she's like, yeah, okay. You know, obviously she's not thrilled about it. Now, I like, with when I'm dating, I'm always like, whatever you want, whatever Can you I need. Can I just say something real yeah. quick? This is already too much. Oh, well, well, wait to this. So then I, so then I was, so I, I'm like, all right, new thing. I'm going to, I want to like respect my time and more. And like, I don't want to go, I don't want to go from New York to Boston to New York back to Maine. Also, no, I, that's like that's too much in a week. That's too much for my vacation week. Also, I so she was supposed to come into her family lives in New York. She was going to come into New York. I was like, I can see you on. I'd love to see you on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And then I had to go to Boston Wednesday and Thursday. But I stayed in New York over Christmas. Part of it was just so I could be here to also get to see her on Tuesday. And I was like really excited about it. So I text like, what do you want to do on Tuesday? This is like a week after we had like made plans to see each other. And she's like, oh, I might not be able to. My friend might be in town. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, let me know. We work at night. We put in our veils at comedy clubs. So, all right. She doesn't know that. But I was kind of like, all right, you got to let me know. Otherwise, because I like, you know, for me to have a free night, like I wiggle stuff around that, mm-hmm. which is part of why it's tough being in relationships with comedians. But mm-hmm. I'm trying. Over and here. people, by the way, let me just say this to people who have ever dated a comedian. They don't realize that shows are work. Right, exactly. They think it's fun. Oh, there's no fun. It's fun. Sometimes it's fun. It is fun. Sometimes, what I, I had fun what last I'm saying night. is they think it's not work. Oh, we're working. And it's like we like you I'm can't just thinking, come into I'm my ruminating. Yeah, you can't come into my office Networking. all day. Yeah. So that's when right. we work. People, right. well, I'll just come with. No, you won't. Right. It's like taking a day off of work essentially. Yeah. yeah. And she was like very respectful of schedule stuff, but and then also someone my friend pointed out she's like maybe it's an age thing because she's like, you know, when I've dated like younger people, they're How like old is she? 24. Okay, she's so young. Really young. So lots of leeway there. Also, fine, no big deal. But then where it got confusing was she was like, all right, I can see you on the 24th, but if you still want to do comedy that night, I like totally cool. And I was, I wrote back and I was like, no, I'm not going to do comedy that night. I'm really excited to see you. Mm-hmm. Like, I haven't seen you in a really long time. Like, I wanted to see you. But I was like, all right, fine. So I go back and I like researched a bunch of stuff in the area for New Year's Eve, right? Like I'm like, what's st- romantic stuff close to New York? All these things pop up, snowshoeing, walking in the woods, all that shit. She wanted to do something kind of like remote. So I find a bunch of inns. I go, I read all the goddamn Yelp reviews. This is why I'm like also screaming about my moving situation. Read all these Yelp reviews. I find a really cute romantic inn. I look at all the different rooms in the Seems inn. Seems like a lot. Why didn't you just? Ha- weren't you already moving into your own place in in Brooklyn? Yeah, but then why not so just was, go there? So I was trying to, you know, do put in some effort stuff. So I find this inn. I get the room, and I'm I had done it all around like snowshoeing. But all right, there's not going to be any snow. We can go like walk around in the fucking woods. Girls like that stuff. Like, look at a pond. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. The, I mean, they always want apple picking. I know that's hacky to say, but like, you know, go look at a tree. <laughs> you can't I don't know. apple pick all the I'm, time. You can't apple pick all the time. That should be <laughs> that should be the name of a dating book. You can't apple. You can't go apple picking uh, yeah. all the time. Or the difference between men and women. <laughs> yeah. You can't apple pick all the time. Do gay men ever apple pick? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, gay right. men, we. So so I I find this in I make a reservation do the whole thing so then I text her I'm like hey I found a place out of the city it's 90 minutes out and then she said well that's not on my way I want to be going back to Boston that's 90 minutes out and then I'd have to bring you back in and right away I'm like I'm already like tapped out from the move <laughs> and women and I'm like hold up hold up out of your way like I've gone to Boston just to visit you and I travel all the fucking time so you don't want to go just that it's even in your brain to not want to go out of the way that to me is like red flag now she's way more chill than most girls that I date but I was like you don't want to go out of your way to do that and I was like all right well I found a uh, this this inn and it, it was in New Jersey but it was in this like fucking romantic shit New, New Jersey's got romantic spots so I go let's it, not say things we can't take back it, I swear to god I read all these Yelp reviews it was supposed to be really like nice and romantic what is it like a better Applebee's it, it was on the cusp of New Jersey too it was like on the cusp on the cusp so it only smelled a little bit like a fart so I didn't even 
because I had been looking at stuff around the Hudson River Valley area, which is like I'm right already there. so pissed off for okay, you. Okay, so wait though. So then, so then I say, okay, it's 90 minutes out of the city. Like I would have gotten a fucking car. I was just surprised that that was even her. She's like, well, it's not already on my way back to Boston. I'm like, okay, Fuck. well, <laughs> what? Maine certainly isn't on my way back to Boston. Also, she, you know, yeah, none of this is on anyone's way. It. That's why it's a mini vacation. Exactly. We're going out of also, both out of our way and to I'm enjoy like, a time with each other. I researched it. My treat, like all that stuff. So <laughs> my treat. So then I knew this. Was, I, I was like, oh, if she's also maybe she's at work. So maybe she like wasn't reading all yeah. the text. So then I go. So it's 90 minutes out of the city. It's in Jersey. And then she wrote back, what's in Jersey? And here's the thing. I'm like, no, you say like, thanks. Thanks. But me, but blah, blah, blah. I'll look into other stuff. Like I'll come up with another plan. I'm so tapped out on me doing all this stuff to for like women big. I'm not just fucking putting us in an Applebee's in Jersey. Obviously, <laughs> I like researched it and found the place and did all this stuff and was trying to come up with something. And it was a TGI and then Friday. Literally, the response of what's in Jersey? I'm like, you know what? So in the past, I would have just kind of been like, oh yeah, whatever. But then basically, I was like, you know, I think we should do our own thing. Ah, wow, Emma. Because which also, can I just say for you, that's huge. a big move. I for never you. do that. I usually that's put good. up. That's good. I put up good. with stuff until. But then I was now I'm kind of like maybe that was a little bit harsh no. because because she's way less maintenance than most women that I've been with. So that's like the culmination of years of me just right, like, let me just say something, not girls, not saying thank you. Like this is all good. that. This is good. just a thank you. Yeah. And it's always, I feel like it's like the men one always just bending over backwards. Like, Oh, I did this. I did that. Here's I've researched all these places. I got you the thing. I'll pay for it. And then they're like, well, man, <laughs> what? what could you imagine if someone was like okay Mateo I found a really romantic inn there's like a I'd great restaurant out. there and <laughs> I'd already like, be gone I'd be I in a got plane it. flying you know away. does this look okay to you could you imagine like not even being like oh thanks or, or and then being like but I, I made this other th-. you know it was like alright let me now let me okay let me say what I think <laughs> one I think this is good for you and I'll tell and you also why and also she said she's like you keep fixating on cause then what we were talking about she's like you keep fixating on um the New Year's Eve, I would have done anything with you. And I'm like, no, the, 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 then when I, I was like, I'm fixating on it. Cause that actually is a thing for me because it's like, I'm looking at like red flags here. Right. And also, okay. Me going to Boston a lot probably would get really tiring and we're probably are both better off with that. Right. But I was pretty bummed out for All right. Now days. I'm going to say what I think. Please. I think that you did the right thing. And I'll tell you why, because you in the past, we've talked about this. Oh. You're very like, you're not, I'm like the. You, you're not upfront all the time when you want things to end. You'll go. You'll go way too far well, and then got, end up either. And I didn't want things to end exactly. Actually. But what I'm saying is, you you I'm tapped out. I'm like literally dealing with the move, all that stuff, and then I'm like. You, but what? do you agree that you in the past will be like you've lied about situations or this? Absolutely. Because you're too afraid to confront. confrontation. Exactly. Yeah, a hundred percent. So I and think you did the, the right thing. And in the past, I'm literally. Like working for like I'm I literally feel like, I, literally I can feel tell like, you are all riled up right now. Just, like, just doing relationships feel like a part time. Jo- they feel like a part time job. For they me. are they're, they're very yeah. difficult, and I think that this is Wendy Williams. This is a good thing. <laughs> I think this is good. You stood up for yourself. You realize what your priorities are. Now let me just say I'll defend her. This this to her she has probably. You know, you're living your own life. She's living her own and life. She could have been like, "Cool, just communicate that with me." Uh, right. So the thing, she's she, she's also young. She's twenty. She's not yeah. a bad person. Not at all. You know, she's she, great. She probably she's you awesome. right now are not ready physically because you're not in the same city. Right. To make this thing happen. Yeah. Because she's so far, and you are not only are you far, but like you said, it, when you have free time, you're already traveling so much. You don't need to be. Right. You don't need to be getting on a four hour bus ride. To it's hard. Also, it's I think we were both work. trying to like play it too cool. I think people do that a lot in the beginning with like dating, where they're where they're like kind of like trying to play it cool like uh, that you know that's why there was like a lot of like gray area there because we were both kind of like oh whatever this whatever that but you're also in the you're also breaking up with someone but not breaking up with someone but living with someone but you're not living with that person so Whole you're thing. already not ready to give anything to this person because you're already trying to manage what you still have left was, over with someone else it was the move out that was like the most i was like I was like, look, like there's on like top a of lot shows, of stuff. On top of holidays right. coming up, on top of money being tight, on top of it's like everything right. accumulating, and it's difficult to just be like, oh, let's have a nice getaway. Exactly. Sometimes and like, then, getaway is not what you want. Also, yeah, too. And then I was because I was kind of like, what are we, what are we doing here? Like I was like, no, I'm, I'm excited for the 
Tuesday. Like, I, I think that she was just trying to be like, oh, yeah, whatever. We'll just do something else if you want. And I'm like, no, nah, like, we never get to see each other. Why would I do something else if I want? I want to fucking see you. Had this whole but, relationship sound like it didn't start on any kind of solid foundation. So, you know what I think, though? I think that things do feel like simpler things. It's streamlined. So, you know, it didn't end in the best way. But Are you not talking to each other? No. I give it a couple of weeks, and then maybe you can go back and be like, listen, this was, this was tough for me, blah, blah, blah. I think it's I, – I really do think it is – I think that I just have to, like, focus on, like, keeping things, like, simple and moving forward. Well, because and, like, that's that a way out for you. When things get stressful, you have someone else to go yeah, to. Yeah, now, no, not at all. And also, like, I do want to be on really good terms with my ex, too. So what which I end, I think you are. Which I am. And you know what? We ended up having a uh, – for, so for New Year's Eve, I had dinner with my friend Gail and her girlfriend. Yeah. And, and my friend – and uh, my ex, and it was so funny because we were all at dinner, and then and uh, Gerald's girlfriend listens to the podcast. What's up? And then she goes, "I love her." By the way, her oh, and I were on love. that jet ski. She's so sweet. I was laughing so hard. She's I so fun. Re- and but, also, let me just say about Gail. Love. We need to have her on this we podcast got because the she's funniest. one of my favorite. She's fucking so people. funny. What a good person. But and she's starting a um, spin studio out in Jersey. I think of yesterday course. was the first day they're open. She's but so Italian. Her girlfriend goes. She was like, "Do you listen to the podcast?" Asking my ex, and then Gail was like, "No." She's like, "No need." And I was like, "Yeah, no, no. There's no need for anyone to listen to any podcast." Um, and I, my ex was like, "No, I haven't. Should I?" And I was like, "There's, you know, why, why listen to? No, no." I have a little bit of drama I had to, I had to deal with with men. Let's hear it. I was talking to this guy who I still think is amazing. And how do you know him? We met on Instagram. Nice. That's the way gays meet right. on Instagram. And he lives in Ohio, and he's just literally he's Ohio? like Ohio. I know I don't like Ohio, but no, that's fine. I like him. But honestly, good for him. That's great. No, he's in a. I'm not gonna like blow up his scene. Like I'm not gonna say who he is and stuff. Right. But um, first of all, he's super handsome. Right. He's super talented and he's super fun and he's smart. And we were chatting for like a long time and just really started liking each other. And so like um, over a month ago, we were talking and I was just chatting on Instagram and texting. Yeah, like, talking and texting. And he was like, I was like, you know what? You should come to New York. You should just come hang out for a weekend. Like have a good time. Blah blah blah. He's like, I- I'm gonna do it so he bought a ticket and i was like awesome See, i love that if a girl did that for me i've never had i've never in my life no one's ever even mildly well like oh i no, i would be like i'll get you a ticket and i'll fucking pick you up and like can i rub your feet on the way you bitch this this is okay so he buys a ticket right this right. is like maybe the end of november beginning of december right and then out of the blue i don't know this i hit this has never i like i can't even believe i'm speaking of this. what happens i meet this spanish guy and like we just like fall head over heels for each other and the guy's got the ticket he's waiting in the wings yeah so i it started getting deeper and from the deeper universe. and deeper and love? deeper with the spanish dude right and i'm and the spanish course, dude lives in new york i'm horrified no but i'm horrified now right like right. I'm, now i'm horrified because it's like he's in new york but he's not he doesn't live here but i'm horrified because i'm like one I, I haven't liked someone like this in a long time, so I'm not even believing my own feelings. And then two... I haven't liked someone. You're talking about Ohio? No, Spanish. Spanish. And then two, I'm... <laughs> I'm attracted and I like this this Ohio guy, but now it's it's like switching so much with the Spanish guy. So I'm like, sometimes I have when you're to talking do... to two people, it makes for the best one. There's times where I've been like talking to two people and I'm like, I've never been happier. I'm like, oh, this is gonna fucking crash and burn because one person's gonna start once one has a problem, the other one has a problem. I can't deal with the two fights. But when it's like harmony, when you're talking to two, it's like you've got the best of all the world. See, I disagree. Oh, I, I love feel that. I'm too Catholic. I have too much Catholic guilt, and now I, can't I don't handle, have the time like... to juggle. But oh, back in the day, talking to two. Well, the crash and burn thing was happening. Right. Like, it was going to come. It usually come. does pretty And quick. I was like, I'm going to put an end to this before it happens. So I call him up, the the Ohio, Ohio guy. Yeah. And I say, listen, I'm just going to be totally honest with you. I started talking to some guy, and I really like him, and I don't think it would be good if you came and stayed with me. Good for you. And he totally understood. He was like, you know what? That happens. That makes sense. Blah, blah, blah. Which but I'd great. still love to be friends and hang out. I, I was love like, that. awesome. Also, that's such a good sign on your part. I also offered to pay for his ticket. Love it. Oh, oh. Ah! <laughs> so, but, but the, what's the, such a good sign there too is you are saying to him also you're a good person. That means he can trust you if you guys ever have anything going on because he knows that you're setting good boundaries. Yeah, and I also just I couldn't deal with the stress of like 
I, I just couldn't deal with it. Right. So I, he, I said, I'm offering to pay for your ticket. He's like, well, I still want to come to New York. Can I crash on your couch? And I was like, no, I no. live in a shoebox. Also, I, if I had no. an extra room with a couch, he could stay at my couch. Maybe I live a little in a, soon for that. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but I live in a shoebox. Yeah, it's Ohio is so, different from New York there, buddy. That's yeah. key difference. So he what goes, do you mean house? So Crash he, at my yeah, house. House? What are you talking about? No, no. I, so I said, you can stay. Uh, I said, I, you can't stay with me. I'm so sorry. I just don't think it would be good. But he goes, all right, I'm going to get an Airbnb. And I offered to help pay for the Airbnb because I felt so bad. I was like, you already coming out this way. But he hasn't said anything about that yet. So he's going to come. We're going to get dinner tomorrow night. Hang out. Oh, this just is totally happening normal. right now. Yeah. Oh, Wow. But you like the Spanish guy yeah, so much. Yeah, the Spanish much. guy, is, that's a different thing. So where's thing. the Spanish guy? And does he know? I don't want to give away too okay. much stuff. But does, yeah, I told the Spanish guy everything. And did he, when you told the Spanish guy, because that's basically, if you're playing chess, you're basically, see, I can't make chess analogies because I don't know how to play chess. So I don't know what to say <laughs> after this. If you're but playing you're, Uno. If you're playing, if, oh, I don't know how to play any game. But basically, on, you're Uno. putting your cards on the table being like, I told this other person. It's basically like telling I someone. I told both of them everything. Good for you. And so, and the Spanish guy was like, it's fine. I understand, but you're but, mine. Oh, good. <laughs> I was like, okay. So does that mean he's like being like, because that's like, but that's treading on a relationship. I I, it is. Which would be amazing. Uh, then I, we'd all get married. I don't know. He's, we'd all get married. He's coming in two days. The Spanish guy. How exciting. Is he going to be here while the Ohio guy's here? Mm-hmm. But Ohio guy's got to have his own stuff to do because he's he, got his own shit. I'm going to get dinner with him tomorrow night and What hang happens out. if you guys get dinner and you're just like, it's just like fucking like, like, are you like, are you really attracted to him? I mean, he's beautiful, but it's not going to go there. Because you have good boundaries. We, we also decided we also really like each other as friends. Now, that's huge. Now, that's something I, really, I like, want to get I would get just into. hang out with him. Right. I think he's a funny, nice guy. Uh, that's really also, a- I told him not to listen to this podcast because he was starting to listen, and I was like, no, no. no. I was like, I needed to get to know you first. Yeah, exactly. I did feel that with a Boston girl where I was like, this is someone who like I could be would like to be friends with. So too. for that reason, yeah. I'm out. <laughs> Um, I started doing Barbara impressions on stage. By I the way. love it, and I didn't know that Carly Aquilino was so into Shark Tank too. Well, I want to tell you a story. <laughs> Just one time, she. What did she say? Of my oh, um, the reason they had me on a show called Shark Tank is because I have more teeth than a shark. Oh my god, she said that. No, oh. <laughs> my, co- my cousin Brian made that up. Okay, we got some questions to get to. Also, I'm so excited for your weekend with these guys. Guy. Guy. The weekend, well, you're right, 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 right. Guy. So, how long is Spanish going to be in town? Five days. Um, is it okay to call him Spanish? Uh, yeah, it's from Spain. Okay, perfect. Very nice. I always call girls by how I know them or their profession. Right. Same. I always. It's always referred to as the blank. Right, exactly. I got, okay, My Cupid, the social worker, like, that's the stripper. The bedwetter, that's the. Right. Yeah, we know everything. Yeah, it's. I, I'm trying to think if there was ever someone that I. Like, and I get like miffed if someone asks me what their actual name is. Because I'll be like, oh, you know, social worker. And if I'm talking about. This is a while ago, but if I'm talking about them enough, like, my mom will be like, and what's their name? I'm like, whose name? She's like, the social worker's name. I'm like, what do you mean, what's her name? She's social worker. And she's like, she's the well, social her, worker. What's her name? I'm like, I, I don't know what her name is. Like, God. Oh wait, I had a, I had a, um, I, I had a mom story I wanted to tell you that I remembered when I was home. Okay. Okay. This is I had this memory of this one. So I was living with my mom after college, and I was dating this girl, Nicole, great girlfriend. And we really like played around with sex stuff, and I remember this. I first started getting like strap-ons and stuff with her, so I like got a couple strap-ons, and I had my own bathroom, and I put them under the sink, and like forgot about it. So I'm staying at my mom's, and it was probably like 8 a.m., and I'm getting ready to go to work, and I'm like drinking coffee and eating oatmeal, and she's reading the paper. And she goes, oh, have you ever been to the Diesel Cafe? And I was like, oh, yeah, I have, actually. She's like, did you know it's lesbian owned and operated? And I was like, yep. And then she's quiet for like four minutes, and I'm eating my oatmeal, eating my oatmeal. She goes, huh, lesbians. And then I keep Did she eating. know you were lesbian yet? Yeah, I'm out. And then, she, and then I keep eating, and she goes, lesbians, you know. I thought they didn't like penis. And I go, what? <laughs> I thought that they didn't like penis. That's part of why they're lesbians. That's what I thought, you know. And then she's quiet again. And I'm like, what, uh, what, well, what made you <laughs> get a new thought? She's like, I thought they didn't like penis. And then I was in your bathroom and I found one under the sink. <laughs> and then she was quiet again. And I go, 
what? She's like, I found one under the sink. And the thing is this. She's like, you need to be a little <laughs> considerate because what if Katie's boyfriend goes in there and uses one and it might feel weird to him to just see another one floating around. It might feel, I don't know how I would feel. I'd be like, oh, I had this and then there's that. You know, maybe you got to hide it better. And I was like, oh, I definitely need to hide it hide better. Hide it better. Oh, for sure. But also her main concern is that you need to hide it better. Yeah. She's like, and then She I, couldn't hide the fact that she saw it and had to she, bring it up at breakfast. She was so chill. It, to her, the point was she was like, well, I didn't know that then that I found one under the sink. And I was just trying to keep it cool and not be like so embarrassed. So I was like done eating my oatmeal and she was like, you don't want any more oatmeal? I was like, I don't want to eat any more anything ever again. She's like, I just didn't know. She's like, we should go to Diesel sometime. Maybe not. I don't know. It's weird. Bye. Do you tell that story on stage? No. Why don't you tell that on stage? I had stage? totally forgotten about it and then I was eating oatmeal with my mom over break. And then I was like, do you remember when you, and then she didn't. And I was like, okay, never mind. I was like, remember like years ago and you found the penis under the sink? She's like, I guess so. There's so many things that have happened. And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, wow, that was passive aggressive. Yeah, I know. Well, she's, she really is. She's so funny. She still is not into the show business though. She's still, she's so okay with me being gay, but the comedy is really hard for her. <laughs> My grandpa, who I love, asked me yesterday, we talk all the time. He goes, so you really think comedy is going to be your career for the rest of your life? And I was like, I, I just, people don't get, like, someone told me when I did Colbert, they go, oh, so is that like a hobby? Man, it'd be an intense hobby. And I was like, do you think, it's what so, kind of hobby gets you doing stand-up on national television? It's so hard, too, because, like, like I would love to be able to talk to my mom when I was feeling, like, if I'm feeling, like, insecure or, you know, frustrated about something. But I know I actually can't do that with career stuff because then she'll be, if I do, she'll be like, oh, well. You know, Why does she want you to give up being in... Because it's it's so hard, I think. She's like, it's... So what does she want? You to be bored for the rest of your life? I don't know people what People don't like when to... you don't play to the script. I that's don't know. A, what, that's something I've noticed, is that people get upset also, when you're not playing point, to the script. My other skills that aren't in entertainment but have like, fucking dwindled. But do you see what I'm saying? Dwind- the we, only thing I'm qualified people, for is to be a greeter at Walmart now. I, that I, is it. I think that... And then even that. Let's be honest. Well, you don't have to do math. But I put a lot of thought into this. I say think hi. People like my friend Pat was trying to quit his job because he hated his job, right? Yeah. And he was like, it brings me no happiness. He's like 47. He's got money, right? Right. He's like, I just don't want this job. I want to look to something else. I want to do something else. Everyone in his life told him, don't quit that job. Right. You need security. Don't quit that job. Don't quit that job. Don't quit that job. I was. The, he said, you, I was the only one who said to him, Absolutely, you should quit that job. Go especially, be a writer. Right, especially if he doesn't have kids. And even if you do, there's ways to do it where you can like figure out and still make it happen. You know. Oh, that's another thing. Someone goes, do you want kids? I love, th- did they? They asked you if you want you, kids. We talked about this. Right. But I was like, someone goes, do you want kids? And I said, no, I don't want kids. And then there was a follow-up. Why? So, okay, well, um, I don't know if a no isn't good enough for you, but uh, I'm selfish and I don't want them. And Great then they answer. go, well, you know you can adopt. Hey. And it's like... D- <laughs> oh, this whole time. This whole time. I've been trying to get pregnant the whole time. <laughs> I was wondering why oh, I, I could adopt. I was doing. I was going to fertile fertility clinics. I'd love to see you go in there. I, the I was vitro. talking to the doctor. I just don't understand why I can't get pregnant. <laughs> I'll be carrying the baby. Like you think that was the issue that I <laughs> right. couldn't figure out how to acquire a baby somehow. Also, someone saying no to not wanting kids. Like this is a ki- like you need to want a. But that's someone kid. saying to you, why don't you do what your parents right. did? And it's like. <laughs> Like, oh, you want me to do everything my parents did? Cause then yes, because that's what people think right. you have to do. When people pursue their dreams, it's a double-edged sword because people, I've noticed people always tell you, you know, you only live once, follow your dreams, follow your dreams, follow your dreams. And then when you actually go out and try to do that, they're like, what the fuck are you doing? Are you crazy? <laughs> You're like, wait, what? I was listening. But at the same time, then I was thinking about this too. When you follow your dreams, when I was, when I was doing recruiting, when I was like, recruiting construction executives for my day job, got fired. When I was doing that, <laughs> I used to dream about doing other stuff. But now sometimes I'll like, go home and like literally i'll like go on indeed.com and google like i'll try to like look at other jobs indeed.com yeah and i'll like fantasize about like being in an office with like people and like having coffee with my friend julie who i used to work with at an office because we would have coffee and complain about the boss if i wasn't doing this you know what i would love to do Mm. it besides drawing i would love to like have my own like restaurant or bakery (gasps) or something shop a That's juice a, shop? Yeah, juice shop. I've wanted one for years. What? A juice shop. I've never seen you drink juice. Well, it's the problem. <laughs> no, no, I wanted a juice shop, and I was into juice before it popped off. I remember walking Emma. around. I swear to God. I was like, fresh juice is going to be big. I remember it like 13 years ago. I swear to God. And I was like, juice, juice, juice is going to be big. I never told. And then this, this cracks me up. I would tell people, I want to get a juice shop. And they would go, oh, a juice shop? And I would go, 
No. And if I said that, how are you not mortified? People, <laughs> you wise your first question. Oh, a Jew, a Jew shop. shop. Like multiple times that happened. Like, oh, I thought you said a Jew shop. Alex, would you go to a Jew shop? Juice. Yeah, Alex, our producer, <laughs> ju- like, I'll go to a juice shop. <laughs> a juice, yeah, I wanted to sell juice, but then there's a, I got a couple roadblocks there. One, you need to do a lot of math to have a store. Well, also, too, you, you really want to just be grinding up different fruits all day? Whoa. Is that what you want to do? <laughs> Is that what you said you want to do? Well, you do? don't just grind up the fruits. I feel like I'd like find like innovative like marketing plans. Like I'd like reach out to spas and be like, I got juice for your skin. I got juice for that. I'm a hustler. So I go around to like college campuses. This I have, like, was the job. This I had like the juice dream days. Job? Yeah. Would and you then, go on Shark Tank? Oh, it, it, Pr- promote but, it right now. This is, well, <sighs> how'd you come up with that idea? Because I was having acne problems and this juice uh-huh. just saved my skin. Interesting. Which saved my life. Fascinating. I'm out. God damn it. <laughs> I would find up some store. I'd say there's a mirac- miracle cure that the juice cured, but it didn't really. What is it? I do okay, before so and after your pictures Your dream that is to become a liar through juice and make yes, money off lying? But I was into You're the like ju- one of those phony like medicine men from 1800s. Who I was- like, I got what I cured what else, yeah. <laughs> I was into the juice way before everyone else was into the juice. This is like way back. This is before little juice shops were popping up all over the place. So it would be like, you know, that was the big idea. And then I was thinking I could run for mayor. This was way back. I know. I had big... Yeah. But, you know... I think you think of yourself as the Monopoly man in your head. Exactly. But as I was, like, thinking of those things, I was also, like, not thriving at my office job. So I'm like, all right, if I can't, like, sell educational insurance... Well, who the fuck wants to sell educational insurance? I don't even know what I was selling. I was not good at selling. I haven't had a real job in so... Like, the last real job I had was when I worked at Blick, the art store. Hilarious. And I was And we work all the time. That's the thing, too. Like, it's it, it's just, like, a constant... Like, anytime I'm with someone, they're always like, you're all, you're just always working. You have to. You have to always be working. You can't take anything for... You can't take anything for granted. No. I, I always say, I'm like, you gotta have... Leave no stone unturned. Like, just, like, no... You know, like, you gotta... It's just, you I just know? think there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into pursuing your dreams. And Absolutely. That's something that's hard to it's do. A, and it's a privilege. Now so we're just like, like pumping each other up. Well, it's, what it, are we insecure about? Oh, I'm so everything. scared of failure. That's what I'm the most scared of. I'm scared of failure. And then like I, that, I'm scared of failure. And then I'm scared of like never being able to be in a relationship. I'm taking the question really far. Yeah. I'm scared of failure. Never being able to be in a relationship. Yeah. Those are my like big fears. Not being a good person. Although apparently... Then, then it all that makes you like very self absorbed. And then the other day, my friend was like, "Man, I really think we're going to go to war with North Korea." And I was like, "Oh my god, I got to start paying attention to other shit." I mean, I've actually been not looking at the news as of late because I hadn't been. And then they showed me that uh, Trump and Kim being like, "My nuclear weapon's bigger than nu- your nuclear weapon." Trump is like me if I were president. Only I'd be a much much better person. But like the like, my button's bigger than your button. Like, it's just. Sounds like yeah. grinder talk. Exactly. Whatever. My button's bigger than your button. Sure. <laughs> All right. We got some questions. Who are the gays who came out to our shows the other night? Oh, I'd I love to get their names. Them. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. What a treat, too. And they sat they sat right up front, which thank you guys. Yeah. I'm going to go look them up right now. Okay. So here's... This is a question. All right. So someone who's at... They're 24. Um, as a not out closeted young adult male... 24. I want Not out closeted a- adult male. Yep. At 24. Mm-hmm. Got it. I want to date, but don't know if I'm ready to come out yet. What do I do? It's not really fair to whoever I'm dating, let alone finding the person. And then, all right, I have this answer because yeah. I've dealt with this. I think, first of all, that's good that you've already taken good baby steps. You've reached out. You're you're aware of your sexuality. And acknowledging that it might not be fair to the person you're going on dates with. Because I've dated plenty closeted or straight women that probably have never that never even considered whether or not it was fair to me to date. He, he, Am I bitter? Here's yeah, the, here's the bit, thing. A little bit. I, I dated a guy for a year and a half who never came out to his family, which I understand. But I, in that on that other side of the relationship, was dealing with all his emotional baggage. Sure. And now that he's out, I mean, I've heard through the grapevine that he's married and everything else. Wait, how long were you knows. dating him? We're a year and a half. So I think, you know, you obviously, like, before you come out, you know, like a lot of times guys will look for this is something that I've done. Look for a relationship because it's a security blanket. Mm-hmm. But it's sometimes not always fair to that person that you're dating. So I think the first thing for you to do is to find a safe inner circle that you can come out to and baby step your way out so that you can find yourself and find what makes you comfortable. And then it'll make it Get easier some other and, support. And it could even it could even be online. But it'll too. open you up yes. to 
being in a relationship that's healthy. And it won't just be you won't be getting all the support from the person too because that's too much. It's a lot it's a lot, it's a lot of lot weight to, to carry. That. Yeah, it is. You know, and I, I think that's think, great advice. Yeah, cuz I I remember being in that position where I was always hidden away from his family. If his family came in town, sure. I had to leave. All evidence of me was re- erased and I was now, like Now was his family very conservative or religious or they just didn't he just didn't come out. Cuz I always I always I understand when someone's like, look, I don't want to come out to my family. I dated someone that was from the Middle East. So I was like, yeah, of yeah, course not everyone's I get in a position, by the way, right. to come out to their family. Right. So there are different, uh, there's obviously many layers to the situation, but I do think if you're in a position where you feel that you can come out, at least to close friends or to family members, yes. if you know, whoever is in your circle that you feel safe to, you should start doing it because the more you're secure with yourself, the more secure you'll be in a relationship. Exactly. I remember one thing that was like really. Start listening to Liza Minnelli. Mm hmm. One thing that was really hard when I was dating someone that wasn't out was she didn't seem to have any like regard for I dated two people that weren't one was out in her personal life but not out at work and like of course of course like and she's like I work for a really conservative like financial firm I wish I didn't but and then she like really like kept those things separate and kind of protected me from it and I appreciated that but then I was with someone where it was like they weren't out and it was funny because their mom was actually bisexual so the and the dad was like an artist so her parents actually wouldn't have cared she just didn't want to come out but and, you know i have to say and that too, was hard for me and she would really cover the tracks and i was like you know your internalized homophobia i've there's tons of things i do wrong in my life but being gay isn't one of them like you're not you're not let gonna, me just say real quick when people always say oh but it was you know you could have come out because it's so easy because our family etc it is not about anybody else it's about right. you right and sometimes for yourself it's not an easy thing to come to terms with right. so it doesn't matter whether your family is for it or against it, it's still an internal battle. Because I think a lot of times, I'm not saying you do this, but a lot it's of true. straight people will say, well, he wouldn't have cared, and blah, blah, blah. It, it, it is not it's a it's a it's belittling to the internal struggle you've been dealing with your whole life. And I to also say that we wouldn't have cared. And also I get it, too, because I mean, my, my parents were like super supportive. But I remember when I came out to my dad, I said, if you have a problem with this, let me know. And like, I'll try to fix it. I remember saying that. And he was like, Emma. You know, your only option is to be who you are. While like, you're in a tool belt. Yeah, right. He's like, M. But he's like, you're in, you know, stop building for a second. He's like, your only option. We have enough extra rooms now. <laughs> your only option is to be who you are. So if I said to you that this wasn't something that I was okay with and that you shouldn't do, then you shouldn't, like, comply to that for me. And I was like, oh, thanks. But I, lo- I get it when you love someone so much and then if they were to say not to do something. And I knew what I was saying wasn't true or right, but I just loved my People want to be liked so and don't want to disappoint. And people exactly. get it into their heads that they're going to be disappointing you if they come out of the closet. And that's not always the case. Right. So, you know, it depends on the situation. But I think the, the first thing for this guy to do, I, I wasn't one of those gays that jumped out and I was on a parade. Uh, and some people do it well. I right. don't. I had to baby step one at a time. I do not parade well. Uh, I've been I, don't, in I don't either because I want porta potties. Like, I hate porta potties. I've I been in parades. I've been in the floats. I don't do it well. But I think baby steps is the way for this guy yeah. to go. And, and he's already taken the right <laughs> step emailing the two experts. <laughs> Holler. And also being, you know, aware of that it would be a lot to your partner. And oh, this is one thing that someone said to me I was dating once that really helped. And it wasn't about coming out or not. But I was like, I was I was trying to do a breakup with her. And I remember saying like, well, it's not fair to you because, you know, this and that. And she said, Emma, if you want to break up with me, just own up to it. She was like don't decide whether or not something is fair to me. I'm an adult. I'll let you know whether or not something is fair to me. And I was like, you right, you right. And then you broke up with her and she hit yeah, you. Yeah, and I was like, well, in that case, it's your personality. No. Yeah. She, <laughs> she, she's actually a, a friend of mine now, Brooke. She's awesome. This Because back in the day, I Brooke had... Brooke Shields. Yeah, yeah, is my ex. You heard it here first. No, Brooke in, Shields <laughs> looks good. She had that lazy boy furniture line. Imagine? She looks great. She had a lazy boy furniture line? She did. I love that. And Latisse. She I mean, did. She I did a lot of that. commercials for a minute. I saw lazy her at Helen Hardy once. Like, not believing she's ever been in one of those I saw stuff. her and Rachel Dratch, not on the same day, at uh, the Helen Hardy on 17th really? Street, between Fifth Avenue. Yeah. Wow. This, But when she said that, because it's like, you might think, oh, okay, I shouldn't be in a relationship because it's not fair to someone because I'm in the closet. If you put all your cards on the table, then they can decide whether or not it's fair for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that that, I think that that's fair. All right, let's lead it. Let's go to another question. Yes. All right, let me pull this. Up. I just got exciting news, by the way. What'd you get? Uh, I'll tell you later. All right. Now, this is a question that this question I love. Now, I don't want to. We need to get our questions organized because I don't want to be like missing any. But okay, this is great. Um, I hope you're having a fun day. 
Mm, sure. Fine. I woke up, watched an episode of RuPaul's Drag Race, and I'm here. I'm a married straight Marine vet. Wow. My 11-year-old son recently came out to me on National Coming Out Day this year. 11. Mm. Can you imagine at 11? Oh, my God. He Good. teared up a little, so I immediately hugged him. Aww. I told him I loved him and would always be by his side no matter what. I soon began to worry about how I would approach the birds and bees conversation. Mm-hmm. The be- in this case, the bees and the bees. The bees and the bees. <laughs> I do not know how to approach this subject with a gay son. Mm-hmm. I love this guy. Mm-hmm. I've mentally prepped to have the straight birds and bees convo for the last two- few years. Same conversation, just replace the bird with a bee. Because uh, I've mentally prepared to have the birds and the bees convo for the last few years because he acts straight. And now I'm caught off guard. Do you all have any suggestions or advice? An 11-year-old acting acting straight. Huge fan of the show. Keep crushing it. Thank you so much for your question and being such a considerate. This guy's the shit. Yeah, thank you. I love him. First of all, thanks for your service. Yeah, thank you for your service. I would be horrible in any type of military service. I'd be helped. The only war I could be in is a cupcake war. (laughs) On the Food Network. I would be horrible in any other way, shape, or form. Sometimes when I get scared about entertainment stuff, I was like, maybe I could just join the military. All right, enough, okay, Emma. Right. You're going to make juice <laughs> and go in the military. You have got to pick a profession. You're not going to go in there. You'd be in the military and be like, I'm going to make juice. You know what these soldiers need? They need juice. Yeah, I'll That's just, what I get. The- we'll just be down in the bunker. I'll be looking side to side. I'll be like, anybody thirsty? <laughs> Like, why? What are you going to do it about? Like, nothing. Guys, but I know a- how we're going to fight the enemy. I'm going to get rid of all their juice. Yeah, we'll give them bad juice. We'll Ju- give them sour grapes. We'll like- tell them that this juice heals them, but it actually puts... It- we'll give them prune juice. They'll be shit in their pants the whole time they're in the war. That's a good idea. I mean... So how do you have... So it's for an 11-year-old... First of all, that's awesome that an 11-year-old can come out. Let me just Fantastic, say this. Fantastic, yeah. At 11 years old, I wouldn't even fathom. I wouldn't even fathom. Fathom what about, coming out. What about if it was in this day and age and there's so much more representation? Well, that's what I'm saying, because the only person we had on TV yeah, was C-3PO and Jafar. Exactly. That I was knew, my only gay people I saw. I knew no gay Prince people. Prince Abu-Boo. <laughs> so I... Oh, my. Dear Lord. I loved uh, Princess Jasmine. That was... Uh, Faggot. So I, I, I think the way... Okay, first of all, the birds and the bees conversation is difficult to have for any parent. And I, let me hear how... I didn't even have it really yeah, with so mine. Because my parents gave me a great one. So how, what did your parents do with you? Uh, Almost nothing. My they dad... They didn't say anything to us. I mean, we also went to... I went from Chicago. We were in sex ed in fifth grade and then also in, I so think, eighth knew, grade and then in high school. And they knew it was being covered in school. Yeah. Because it's an uncomfortable conversation to have. My dad, we never really talked about it. Now my mom... Of course, your mother. I don't remember at what age it was, but she. Emma, I want to talk to you about the, the yes. birds and the bees. It was very specific. She sat me and my sister down. Don't go. Don't go to the bees. And then she had all these like books out, and she's like, "Okay, this is a vagina. This is a penis. Here's how this works. Here's how that works." You know? Why did she do it that she way? Does, because she was like not using any like baby talk. She was like, "And if anyone ever does anything, then you need to rip, tell me. You need to tell a teacher. You need to tell an adult. You need blah, 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 blah. And then she like then she was like, "Now you got, do you guys have any questions?" And we were like, "No, like ah, we don't want to." with this and she was like okay and then she like slid the books under each of our doors and wrote like if you have any questions you can talk to me about it and then i remember like a couple weeks later going in and being like so what's this what's that and she was like super frank and it was like a great birds and bees conversation i i think for this guy what i would say to a young gay guy because there could there could be a lot of um there's a lot of sex in the gay world, and so it, and everything can be very sexualized. Yes, it protect yourself. So, so what I would say is, you know, here's what I would say: sex can be fun, but sex is fun between two people that care love about, each other yeah, and trust each, each other. other. And you know, the, the, for a young gay guy, I would say what I would warn him against is, th- you know, I think the dad needs to be aware of apps like Grinder, Scruff, all yes, this stuff. Yes, at eleven, no. But I'm saying is the Instagram DMs, all this. stuff. I don't think at an eleven year old he should worry about that. So I think well, that kids are really tech savvy and they might start like going online. I would have probably, you know, it's great that he's telling his dad because then he's not going online. To you know what would be stuff. a great thing to do? Find some local gay youth centers in your city, right? Where where younger kids can meet, and if he doesn't have any gay friends, you can bring him to those centers because he'll be able to get a better grasp of. Um, you know how to relate to kids who are gay because unfortunately when you're that young you don't have as many options everyone else starts dating right you don't have those options or getting crushes sometimes. and then or they getting like, crushes yeah. and dealing with them so maybe expose him to people who he can feel normal around right um, in terms of sex just explain it to him gay right. men have sex by you're literally putting a penis into a butt 
you know, and blow I mean, jobs. And, and I wouldn't go to blow jobs. Just just explain what sex is and, and say like some men top, some men bottom. But that's a conversation you have when you're with somebody and you with somebody that you love. Um, and, and say you know, obviously protection is is key. And take it. I mean, now that and take it. No, I was just saying take it seriously. And <laughs> take it. But you yeah. be a man. I, Fight the pillow. I think once you get like a bunch of once you get the, the like the basics down and you like don't like sugarcoat it and just like lay it all out there. Yeah, never sugarcoat it. Say a penis goes into a butt. I'm yeah, not joking because that's what my mom did. Like there was no like. But the, he also, if he's 11, coming out to his dad, he knows what sex is. Right. He understands what sex is. Right. You have to put in con- you have to put in context then, that this is between two people who right. like each other. Then the other stuff comes down Trust. to parental decisions and your own personal view. Like if it was me, I'd be like, you know, you need to you. It never hurts to wait like waiting is like really important you need to respect yourself and make that sure the other person like, yeah, i don't know virginity you. was like a thing that you yeah, want to wait, lose so desperately it, but i don't know if it's necessary wait make it special don't play around with drugs and alcohol and Honestly, don't smoke cigarettes whatever him, you do it's not worth it one thing i would teach technically is if no teeth if in the blowjob no is lube lube is oh. a big thing with because oh how to put on a condom how to put on a condom that's a great one that's a great one kind of self-explanatory but the thing is, the internet answers so many questions. He knows how to have gay sex. He's right. watching the internet. I think and, it's just put it in context. And I mean, I think that people should try to like try to have kids wait until they're like eighteen to have sex. No, just hand jobs and blow jobs before eighteen. Well, kids are going to be curious. I, he may not be ready to know about sex. He's eleven. Right. I mean, how I do don't I, remember how old kids are when they have the sex talk. So I'm trying to wonder if I think I was about. I think I was like ten, maybe when my mom ten, was, maybe young. I don't know. We were young. You were it, like six. It wasn't like, yeah, it wasn't like, uh, like it was, it was very much like how babies are made too. And she said, you know, sex it can feel good, but like it's also used to like make babies. Like, hey, actually, was, you know what? I have something I think he should teach him when he gets older. Yeah. I, I, you know what? Gays do not have, a, we do not have anyone teaching us our history. We have to seek that. Oh, yes. We don't know what, I didn't know what Stonewall was. I didn't know anything about gay rights until Harvey, I didn't know any of these things until I was older because we're not taught it in school. So maybe the sex talk isn't so much about sex as it is about teaching him his community's history and the importance of being gay and and what that means because if you're young and you're gay, you may just see things like RuPaul's Drag Race and Hot Guys on Instagram, which are wonderful things. Beautiful but, things. But it's not exactly showing you the history. Right. And so every other community is taught their history in some sense. And so you have to teach him our history. So Absolutely. So do some research about what – start simple. Go to the Stonewall you, riots and, and, and go from there. If you could go back and have had your parents say anything to you, what would you have wanted them to it say? It just was such a different time. I don't even th- – I can't even compute. I think – you see, there's no way my, – and my I mom wouldn't, – I wouldn't even have been ready to go at 11 years old to say that I was gay. That, sh- oh, that kid is a fucking – Brave. The dad's brave and now the kid's brave. Because I, I was a, my whole family was a bunch of pussies. It was because also like if my mom my mom was talking to what she thought was a straight kid, which I don't know why she thought that, but um like I was like, What's up? You ready for the sex talk? Let's do this. And that she was, was like, you talking to That was to your me mom. talking to my mom. But you know, I guess looking back I would have to tailor it to like a gay thing, it would have been, you know, there's I mean, but there's no fucking way she would have known this. But I remember, like, when I first got to college, like, my first couple relationships, it was like, when I got to college, those were the equivalent of what all my friends went through in high school, where it was like they would, like, fall in love quickly and be so excited and all this stuff. But I got to college, it was like the first time I was actually right. dating. So, like, gay is it takes us a minute to catch up to what you were right. doing at 12. And then you've got this, like, hyper bond because all of a sudden, like, you feel like I felt like with my first girlfriend, it was like us against the world because it was like, oh my God, all these feelings I've been repressing, I'm now, like, putting onto this one mm-hmm. person and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good relationship. Yes, I mean... Shout-outs to Erica. So I hope we're giving good advice. I I think that that... I think getting the history, I think that is, like, a really, really good one. Um, And we can wrap it up with that. We got tons more... We have so many more questions. Yeah, then the whole next episode is a whole... But I'd love to hear from you guys if you guys have any thoughts on what you think would be good to hear... You know, for the bees and the bees talk for an eleven-year-old. Yeah, let's like give him as much advice it. as we possibly can. Yeah, so tell this guy to hold off till next two weeks from now. Oh, this is another thing. I would be very I because I my niece I've got my niece is seven months old now. I've been watching watch this all these documentaries on meth. How do you keep the kids off of methamphetamines? Uh, Emma, I we am can't so go from scared. Young gay kids to meth. In I know, this but conversation. I am so scared because it's like everybody is addicted to like meth and oxycontin, and it's Who's like everyone, everybody apparently no if you go on netflix everybody is on drugs i watched the show dope l- last night and 
I mean, are these real shows or scripted shows? Oh, uh, I always have a hard time telling. No, die there, girl. <laughs> they're documentaries. Okay. But because what happens is you hurt your foot, you hurt your finger, and then you go in, and then they put you on, you know, pain pills. And then when your finger or whatever is healed, then all of a sudden you stop getting the prescription for it. But you're like, oh, I'm addicted to the pain pill. Not Just everybody. Get some ibuprofen. And then you go out in the street, and your next thing you know, you're doing heroin. I okay, am well, so this scared. really ended on a terrible so- note. It could have ended wonderfully I, from a military I, son man who came out at 11, and now we're talking about everyone's on crystal meth. Everyone, because it's on my mind, like I was looking at the baby, my like beloved little niece, and Emma, I just seen these documentaries, and I was like, you know, what do we Emma, do? Emma, you can't have kids. I can't have kids, because it's like, because I was like, what do I, do I, I was thinking of saying. Unless it's my kid, and you have to go off on an <laughs> island to be pregnant. I was thinking of saying, if you, if you wait, if you don't try any drugs until you're 27, I will give you I will give you money. Okay, then I, that's me. Because if I said, yeah, I said, all don't. I've done is smoke pot a few times. That's great. I'm yeah, just not interested in drugs. I, but, but then it's like if you bribe them, because my stepdad said his dad bribed him and said, if you don't ever smoke cigarettes, I'll give you a th- by the time you're like 18, I'll give you $1,000. And he no, goes, because he said that, I was so curious that he said he went out and smoked a bunch of cigarettes. Yeah, of course. So I wouldn't want to tell her, you know, don't do any. But I just want to say, please never, you can never do any pills. You're getting upset about a child you don't even have. She's seven months old. I'm very worried. <laughs> She's seven. I'm very worried. Everybody She's is on these pills. Baby. <gasps> Every, yeah. You know, just it's like, it's like, how do you, being a parent these days, is really tough. Well, on that on note, that note uh, real happy uh, we got that out of the way. And we have a show January 12th, 12th in, San in San Francisco, Francisco at Sketchfest. Yes, it's going to be so much fun. We're going to be doing a live podcast. We can't make to, wait to meet you guys. So yeah, so come on out. January 12th. If you are in San Francisco or Oakland or you know anybody who is, it's going to be a lot of fun. It may just be my brother and his husband in the theater. I got a couple cousins there. Oh, work. So yeah. it's going to be a family reunion. My Uncle Abe and uh, his uh, partner, Chris. All right. Well, thanks so much, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.